y'all hear me? I always got to make sure y'all can hear me. he cooking what is he cooking and I have it typed right on top of the video so I'm doing old school uh, cornbread and bread pudding so so y'all know I'm gonna let a few more people get on almost 300 people right now so I'm gonna let a few more cop on here and we're gonna get started cooking here I try to do everything in less than an hour so See if I can still stick to that. Like I said, this is not scripted. Live is very difficult for me because everything has to come out like it's supposed to because I'm not editing. It's all live. So any mistakes I do, lucky I've been lucky so far. So any mistakes I do is going to be, y'all going to see everything. Oh yeah, cornbread with lots of butter is awesome. Okay, y'all. I'm definitely going to get ready here. I'm going to get the rice pudding started here. Because I can do this as uh, I'm gonna, I... Because the rice pudding takes about 30 minutes to cook. So I'm going to get this started. So welcome everybody. I got my pot here. And what it is, I'm going to add my rice here. And I'm going to... Tomorrow when I upload, I'm going to leave this video up and I'm going to move it over to YouTube and I'm going to put the exact recipe for the rice pudding on the description so y'all will know how it's made. So I've got long grain rice. Of course, y'all got to use long grain white rice. And I'm going to put the water in here. About four cups of water. And I'm going to let this... I'm gonna let this boil for about 15, 20 minutes. And while that's boiling, I'm gonna make the cornbread. I'm just making this cornbread freehand. So, like I always do, I make cornbread so many times I don't measure nothing. So hopefully tonight it'll come out like it always do. So I use regular yellow cornmeal. Nothing fancy. Regular cornmeal. And I got my, uh, I got a, I'm going to do it in the skillet. You can do it in the pan. I'm doing it in the cast iron skillet. And what I'm going to do, I like to put a little oil in my cast iron skillet and heat it up in the oven. Bacon grease is the best thing, but I don't have any more bacon grease left. So I got some oil heating up in the skillet. I got the, skillet, I got the oven already on 350. So in this bowl, I got uh, just yellow corn meal. Put some flour in this. Regular AP flour. Let's say. Put some sugar in this. If you don't like the cornbread sweet, like my mama, she don't like sweet cornbread. I do. I like all the sugar in mine. You say, baby, don't you make your cornbread so sweet? She got that, so that's understandable. Okay, now I'm gonna put a uh, salt and pepper. I got a little salt and pepper in this. Bacon powder. Thing to make in the kitchen. Mix these dry ingredients together really good. Really good. Mix them up. 
Hey, Captain. Okay, now I got the dry ingredients mixed up. Now, put a couple of eggs in here. I don't use three eggs in this one. Sometimes I put two, but I use three. I use three eggs in this one. kinds of milk to this. I'm use regular milk and I'm going to use a little butter milk to this. You can use either or. But I got a little butter milk so I'm going to put a little butter milk to this. seen before that's gonna make your little secret ingredient gonna make your cornbread so so creamy you never heard of a creamy cornbread but I put a little sour cream in mine put some sour cream in there I never seen that before have you I gotta watch my rice here make sure my rice spread my rice up here Y'all don't let, let me forget I'm cooking rice pudding here too. Okay. Got sour cream in there. Got a little bit more milk. We have one more. Forget I got more oil in there. Add more oil out there. That I got in the oven. So we incorporate this together. Bacon grease makes the best cornbread, I think. You got some bacon grease left over. Instead of using oil, regular oil, use bacon grease. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix this up in here, make sure it's fully incorporated. I got rice boiling for the rice pudding. The first step, there's three steps when I make rice pudding. So the first step I already got. Okay, what I'm gonna do, pour this in the black and skillet here. Looks like I got too much here. I'm gonna save this other for the, I'm gonna make some cornbread muffins. I'll make, make some Johnny cakes with it. What's left over? Okay. Put this in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30, 40, 30, 35 minutes. That's all it's going to take. So that's done. Now, check on my rice here. Rice is boiling. We want to boil. I can sit here and chat with y'all when I'm making this uh, rice pudding. I want this rice to boil by 15, 20 minutes. But let me clean up a little here. Okay. And these recipes are so 
so simple. Like I said, rice pudding. I'm gonna give y'all a story on rice pudding, how I grew up on rice pudding. Rice pudding, I didn't grow up on it like this. On growing up in my house, uh every Sunday morning, for as long as I remember, we had rice. For breakfast. A lot of people never heard of rice for breakfast, but in my house, in growing up, rice, we had rice for breakfast a lot. And I'd always eaten rice with butter and sugar. I have never, until I moved to Houston, Texas, heard of rice without butter and sugar. I always had butter and sugar on my rice. It's the only way I ever eat it. I never had eaten rice with gravy and all that. I just never, I never grew up with it like that. That just was a staple, the way mama made it. So back to the story, every Sunday, all the rice that we didn't eat, when we come back from church, my mama would make rice pudding out of it. She'd add more sugar and a little bit more milk and bring it back up to the boil. And that's how she made rice pudding. I'm gonna make it from scratch. That's what I'm doing today. Same concept, but I'm not letting it set up. I'm gonna do the whole concept from scratch. But like I said, I never had rice without sugar and butter on it. Growing up, that's the only way I ate it. I guess, I don't know if that's just a uh, Northeast Texas thing or what, so I don't know. That's just the way I, I grew up eating. When people say rice for breakfast, I never heard of that. Well, that's the way I grew up eating. Maybe some other people have heard of that too. cinnamon to mine, Michael. Soon, that's one of my ingredients that I'm going to add to it. I'm going to put all the ingredients over here and then I'm going to add to it later. I got cinnamon here. I got half and half, but you can use milk too. That'll work. Milk will work. Raisins. I got egg. All this going to go in the rice pudding. Plus the sugar here back here I have. I got sugar in the bag here. Yeah, I'll use it first. And then I'm going to have sugar here for it. All oh, this is going to make the, the rice pudding. Okay, this has been cooking by about 15 minutes, I got about 21 minutes, and then I'm gonna add uh, milk to this and let it cook another 10 minutes. So we need to let this get tender. I'm gonna add another 10 minutes. I'm gonna add milk, I'm gonna add about six cups of milk and half and half to this. You can use, I'm gonna use half and half and milk. Half, half and half, half milk. But it doesn't really matter. Half and half makes it a little bit creamier. So yeah, okay. Yeah, my mama used to make leftover bread, uh, bread pudding with leftover bread too. Nutmeg and bread pudding is good too. <laughs> so what I want, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to cook this down until the, until it gets a little of water, just uh, disintegrates a little, and then I'm gonna add the milk to this. Hello, Donna. Oh yeah, a little bit more, a couple more minutes, and then I'm gonna add the milk. I got raisins, oh yeah, I love raisins in my house. I don't need the golden raisins. They have a better flavor. I have golden raisins here. I don't like the black raisins. I like the golden raisins. They have a little bit more flavor for me. 
Everybody's different. Okay. I don't even know the name brand of this. It's a regular Dutch oven. I have about six, seven Dutch ovens. I use for different things. They, this is my smaller one. Of course, I have bigger ones according to what I want to do or what I'm cooking. If I'm cooking on top of the stove, something small, I use this one. If I'm braising something in the oven, like a lot of chicken legs or short ribs or something like that, I use a bigger one. But these things are good because they conduct heat good and they uh, don't stick. Unless you're a horrible cook and burn something up, but that means it's hard to do. It's hard to stick these things. Hello, uh, Dana. Uh, I'm going to uh, call in. I'm going to uh, host your recipe. I got a cup and a half of rice and four cups of water right now. That's all I have in here right now. Usually rice is usually two to one. one. For each cup of rice, you use two cups of water. That's usually the uh, metrics on cooking rice. I look, get a little bit over that. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add about six cups of milk. This is gonna make a lot of rice pudding, but believe me, it won't be here tomorrow when my neighbor's here by it. So I'm gonna use six cups of milk. This is half and half ready. I'm gonna pour this in there. This is two, four, two more, six. A little less, put about five cups. Okay, now, this is going to have to come to a simmer. I'm going to cover this up and let it come to a simmer. Temper them and put in there later, but I go on and crack them in the bowl. I've never seen rice pudding like this before. I think the eggs give it a little bit more body, as you'll see later on. I'm going to put the vanilla into the eggs. Trust me, y'all probably think I'm crazy to put all this and put eggs in great pudding. I mean, uh, rice pudding. What I'm going to do later on, I'm going to add the hot rice to, to this to temper the eggs so they don't scramble when I put it into the pot. Then I'm going to pour this into the pot. This is going to be the last step I do, other than the raisins. So, we got that ready. Okay. Yeah, Stacey, I like to clean as we go. When I finish cooking, there's nothing dirty in my kitchen. That's what it is. I like to eat when I finish cooking. Okay. Yeah, Vanessa, I'm cooking uh, old school cornbread, which I got in the oven, and I'm doing rice pudding. Old school rice pudding on top of the stove here. So that's what I'm cooking right now. And I'm going to leave the video up, and I'm also going to move it over to YouTube tomorrow, or maybe I'll do it tonight. 
so y'all can see it. I'll post the links to the recipes on on the on there too, and uh, uh, for the rice pudding and the cornbread. So people are always ask me how you make old school cornbread. How you make old school cornbread? So tonight I definitely have the have that for them. I just need to melt me some butter to go pop the cornbread when it come out. Appreciate y'all too, uh, Lindsay. Appreciate everybody watching. Y'all know y'all have better things to do on Saturday nights than uh, to watch me in the kitchen cooking. So I appreciate that. amazing the last two months my youtube and all my social media accounts have almost not doubled but it's been up like over 20 30 more percent than normal because everybody's at home and nothing to do so we have to watch youtube and all that so i guess this kobe 19 has been an advantage for me i'm getting more views and and stuff on my social media account so i guess there's a silver lining in every cloud huh Yeah, I need my own show on Food Network. Yeah, that maybe that maybe one day, Stacy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so anxious to make sure. Let's see what she said. I'm trying to read y'all comments here. Okay, that's Colin. That's awesome. Like I said, Colin, I'm gonna uh, put the recipe on the. Uh, give me time. The more I have it up there, I'll put it on the uh, video link to the YouTube. I'm going to link this to YouTube and y'all go watch it over there. I'll put the recipe on the bottom. Oh yeah, crackling cornbread? Yes, definitely. <laughs> cornbread and buttermilk. I'm not a cornbread and buttermilk, but my mom and my mom's sister, they can sit and eat cornbread and buttermilk. My, matter of fact, my mom's sister, she's cornbread and buttermilk every day. It's like, that's sometimes that's the only meal she eats. I just can't, I've tried it, but I just not, a, I can't eat buttermilk like that. But they can do it. That's definitely old school, that. Cornbread and buttermilk. That's definitely old school. I'm trying to get this milk to come up to a ball. Once it come up to a ball, then it, uh, I can add the rest of the ingredients. Yes, sir. Cornbread and the corn, corn, you know what? My mom says I make cornbread in the, in the cast iron skillet a lot, but she don't like that in the corn cast iron skillet a lot. She says it's too high for her, and she'd rather get eat, use it in the square pan. When I take it to her, I try to make it in the square pan. Cause she, she, I mean, she's very. She'll tell me, what, you know, the older you get, people tell you exactly how they feel. I love that. I respect that. She said, no, baby, don't. Don't bring it in, I don't like it in the gas skillet. It's too high, <laughs> it's too large, it's too big. So, so I try to make hers in the square pan. <laughs> cornbread evaporated milk, I never heard of that one. Yeah, you missed the cornbread, it's in the oven right now, but you can go back and watch the video from the beginning later, I'm gonna leave it up. Uh, thank you, Jennifer Dykes. Uh, I'm gonna leave the video up and uh, Y'all go back and watch it. And it's real funny. Sometimes when I leave a video up, 
You know, it's fake me on slide. When it first come on live, I asked y'all, can you hear me and stuff like that. Two days later, I can see comments, people telling they can hear me, they can hear me, because they think I'm actually live, and it's, they, they don't realize it's just a, you're watching a previously recorded episode, but it's pretty cool, pretty funny to see that. Hot water cornbread. Yeah, I got a recipe on YouTube, hot water cornbread. Yep. Yep. This particular oven, I think I got an H-E-B. They had them on sale for like 15 bucks, this one right here. I had a couple of them sent to me by some subscribers to me. I've gotten so many things from subscribers, but yeah, I've got a couple from just some subscribers just sent them to me just to support my channel. So, yeah, I've had, I got, like I said, I got about six, seven Dutch ovens. A couple of them I'm giving away because I don't need them. Okay. Say so this definitely needs to boil. All right. Uh, where are you? Uh, okay. Y'all can sit here and just answer questions right now, y'all. Because I'm very idle. I'm usually not this idle in the kitchen. But, I mean, nothing I can do. I gotta wait till this it's boiling, but come to a complete boil and start reducing a little. Cornbread almost ready in the oven. So, yeah. Now it's boiling. This is what I want. It's definitely what I wanted to do. Now let it that boil a little. And then I'm gonna add the sugar. And that's gonna help thicken it a little too, the sweetness of the sugar. Can't hear me, Jennifer? Everybody else can hear me. My favorite meal to cook, I got so many. I guess barbecuing is my favorite. Like I did a lot of barbecuing yesterday. I guess that's my favorite thing. I don't know, I cook all kinds of things. I could sit in here and eat, uh, make spaghetti and meat sauce and eat that for two or three days straight. It all depends on the mood. I like all kinds of food. I don't guess I have a specific favorite to, to cook. Like all kinds. Okay, because somebody said they couldn't hear me. Jennifer said she couldn't hear me, so that's why I asked. Because I'm right here by the microphone. What's the first meal you ever cooked? The first thing I really ever cooked was, I guess, scrambled eggs like any kid. Scrambled eggs usually the first thing most kids cook. But the first thing I ever baked was lemon pie, like I said during the Black History Month. That's the first thing I ever baked was uh, lemon, lemon meringue pie. Because I used to do them for about uh, uh, vacation Bible school in the summer to raise money. And that's how I, that's what I used to cook. First thing I ever used to bake. I'm just checking the rice, yes. It's definitely tender. I just need to thicken it down. Definitely tender, okay. Okay, that's early. I'm thinking of buying a Dutch run court. Uh, you can, if you're going to use this for a deep fry, Michael, I mean, I get the biggest you have and put a thermometer. But, I mean, I guess you can do that because you'll have multiple uses for, uh, for the Dutch oven other than using it for fryer. So if you're making that investment, you got multiple ways of using it instead of just ordering a deep, buying a deep fryer. I made the dinner roll, they were good. Turned out hard, I made chicken bread. Why like they was gone? Why, I don't know why your dinner rolls turned out hard. Because that's one of my best recipes. Uh, Brittany, I don't know if you didn't let the yeast rise enough. Sometimes you don't let the yeast rise enough as you put it on the thing. That'll make your rolls come out hard. So I think maybe that's what it was. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to add my sugar to this. Definitely going to bring it another. Once you add the sugar to this, that's when it's really going to get down to thickening. The sugar will thicken too. Cook this about five minutes. making a lot of rice pudding. I'm going to let this come back up to a boil. Okay, back to these questions here. Rice pudding, where you have written it out. I haven't been looking for rice pudding. I'm going to write it out. I'm going to put it on the description of the video later, either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Robert. Yeah, that chicken was awesome. I, matter of fact, I drove two hours and took off for that barbecue to my mom today. I took a lot of stuff to her. I couldn't really go in the house with all this COVID stuff, so I really couldn't see her like I want to because here in Houston, the thing is starting to skyrocket again, and I don't want to give her anything, so... I just dropped it off the front porch and she had a heifer come out and get it and I talked to her from the distance from the front. But I saw her today. I was going to do a live with her, but I couldn't take a chance and go in there and get her sick. So I just took all the stuff down there and packaged it up and they gave it to her. All the stuff, we break down a chicken and fried stuff. Yeah, fried chicken. Can't go wrong with fried chicken. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Have you ever heard of vinegar roll? I've never heard of vinegar roll. No, never heard of that before. Let's see here. Are you ever going to do a group one-on-one -on -one cooking class where we can fly? Um, Lindsay, this was the, before this COVID-19 and all this stuff took effect, I was going to do a, for 10 people, go to your, if you live in the, you know, Texas, Louisiana area, whatever, close to me, where I go to your house and feed 10 people, show you how to cook or whatever, but I don't know if I'm going to do that right now with all this stuff going on, I'm trying to, might have to delay that until this thing gets clear, I definitely want to do that, I wish I could have a, a, a central venue where people can just come in and I can set up a place where people can come in and watch me cook and then have a big buffet out this over or whatever. That's eventually in my plans, hopefully in a year or so, as the channel gets popular. But that's something I definitely want to do. Oh yeah, my mom, she's doing fine. We're definitely going to have her back on here pretty soon. But it's all about her health because she's just 75 and I can't afford it. I don't want to get her catching up and nothing like that. So. It's not worth it. Okay. And also today, y'all, I put up a link, which is going to get more uh, options on my, I have a Teespring shirt. I'm on, I'm actually, in the next few weeks, I'm, that's all I'm going to be wearing, my old school soul food apparel and stuff, so, so y'all can see the different kinds I have. So y'all can maybe you want to go purchase some and kind of support the channel. I don't make a lot of money off of them, which I set the price as low as I possibly can. So y'all can uh, go and, uh, hello Cindy, y'all can uh, go and purchase the apparel. So I put a link up there and I'll do it periodically. You go to my YouTube channel and there's a link there also. And every video you watch there's also the little items at the bottom of the video that you can purchase. Cornbread almost ready. Oh, coconut cake. You ain't made that yet, Susan? Uh, let's put what we need to put. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. Montre Montreticia. That's a good idea, too. I can do that, too. Just do what online class and just let y'all know. A whole week in advance, y'all buy everything. And of course, I'll have a better setup and video where y'all actually see, and I'll go a lot slower. 
than I am. Cause I do, I cook fast, but if I'm doing acid clinic, I have to go a lot slower for people to kind of keep up and step up. So that's a good idea. That's definitely a good idea. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's support. Like I say, it, I mean, it's not like I say, not a lot of money going in my pocket. It's just like I like to get my name more out there. If you're wearing my stuff and showing my fun, people be curious. What is it? Because in the front of the shirt, it say old school soul food. And then y'all know my saying in the back, it say have a black as you close. Like in the back, going away, it's like it says have a blessed old school soul food day. That's all it is. Some of them have my picture on them. Some don't. So you have the choices. And I have other type that's going to be coming out too. So, anyway, go check it out if you're interested. Okay, now, this time I'm going to turn this down, this thing for the pop. Now I'm going to add the eggs to this. It's really going to thicken it more. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some of this hot liquid to the egg mixture here. Kind of temper it. The eggs don't scramble when you put it in there. You know that. Most people know that method already. Okay. You just pour that in there. Put the cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla. Now it's smelling like rice pudding in here, y'all. Smells absolutely awesome. Then I'm going to throw the raisins in here. And you see this look loose right now, but as you know, rice pudding is best cold. So when this sets up, of course y'all ain't gonna see this when it sets up. But once this sets up, it's gonna get really thick and be awesome. So I'm gonna pour it in a, I'm gonna actually pour it in a, a, a dish here, and I'm gonna let it put in the refrigerator. And maybe tomorrow I'll put a video up how it, how it looks after it come out. So this is the dish I'm going to pour it in right here. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Tomorrow we're going to, can't eat this till tomorrow. It ain't going to get cool till tomorrow. I'm going to let this simmer about five more minutes. Then I'm going to pour it in the pan. And we're going to have some awesome rice pudding, y'all. Yep. Cover this up and let it simmer a little. Five more minutes. Oh yeah, they smell, you can smell the, the cinnamon. You like I say, you can put nutmeg in, it smells absolutely awesome. It does. Cornbread down about five more minutes. Melt my butter a little bit more. I mean, who doesn't like rice pudding? I mean, it's just awesome. It just you get your bowl of cold rice pudding, sit in front of the TV, sit in front of the computer, do your work, eat some rice pudding. Hey, it doesn't get no better than that. It doesn't get much better than that at all. It doesn't get much better than that. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, this recipe is awesome though. Like I say, hot is going to be soupy, cold is going to be set up. Like I say, I'll do a quick video tomorrow after it's set up because of course tonight it's, gonna, it's not going to have time for y'all to see how the finished product set up. But tomorrow I'm going to do one when it already uh, cooked, already cold. This is definitely hot. Too hot to eat. Mm -hmm. Y'all, this stuff is awesome. I'm telling you. I ain't telling you this because I cooked it. It's real good. Mm -hmm. You got the creaminess, like I said, I use half and half and milk. Creaminess for the milk. 
and then the edge, give it extra creamy. Then that just a touch of cinnamon, like I said, you can put nutmeg. Oh my God, this stuff is awesome. Okay, now, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna pour it in here. This is the tricky part here, y'all. Maybe I should ladle this here inside. I think I'll lay it over here. You like pour it, but the night I'll make, of course I'll make a mess if I try to pour it. Just a second, y'all, I'll show you the finished product. I just wanna, I don't wanna pour it in there and make a mess. Okay. Set up in the fridge just like this. I think I'm gonna let this set right here. I'm gonna just let it sit here, and when I finish, I'll put it in the fridge later. I'll let it get cool later. Well, we need to get the cornbread out now. You know how easy that is, y'all? How easy that was? See that? Stir that in there, make sure all get stirred in there when you put it in there. All that juice is completely incorporated in there with the rice because you don't want that. See? That's it. Now, let's get our check, check our cornbread here. Cornbread here. Cornbread in about two more minutes. Okay. Yeah, tempering eggs, yeah, because some people, when you say tempering eggs, they don't understand the meaning of it and what it means. Uh, so I try to, you know, because I try to make sure everybody's not knowledgeable and some people are young, like I was. So I try to get on that level because I know a lot of young people watch my channel. I'm very impressed and very uh, uh, honored to have a lot of young people watching my channel. I have a lot of young fans. So I try to put it on their level and explain things to them where they understand what I'm talking about. Yep. Hey, the meatloaf, Captain, I got a recipe. Just search old school meatloaf. I got a recipe on there. And the key to meatloaf is soak your breadcrumbs in milk and fold them in real nicely. They're going to give you a moist meatloaf. That's the secret to my meatloaf. Yeah, I put two cups of sugar in it, Brittany. Right after that, Brittany, that was the third step. Right after I put the cream... And let it cook 10 minutes, then I put the sugar and let it cook 5 minutes, then I added the eggs and raisins. You missed it. Okay, now, cornbread is ready here. on the cornbread, like brush it with some butter when it come out. That's it, y'all. Old school cornbread, y'all. Can't go wrong. Of course, it's going to be hard. I'm going to let this sit up. I'm going to try to see if I can cut a piece out of this before I go off the air here. At least y'all can see me eat something. All right. cornbread. Turn this off. Oh yeah. Definitely done. I just push it and see if it's done, y'all. You can put a you can put a fork and knife in it, but it's definitely ready to eat. I'm gonna let it sit up a little bit and I'm gonna cut a piece of cornbread. Let y'all see how they look. 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna eat a piece of this. I got some barbecue left from last night that I took out. I took all the barbecue from my mom except a little few pieces that asked me a day. I took it all to her and her and my auntie and my other relatives they can eat. But I ain't gonna eat it, ain't gonna sit in my house, so she can definitely eat it. So yeah, I'm gonna eat some barbecue with that. With this cornbread. Okay, here. What is all they put the gravy in? I ain't never heard anybody add it. other than raisins. You could probably add anything else to your bread, uh, to your uh, to your uh, rice pudding. Whatever you like. I just tuned in a few minutes ago to see you start the cornbread. My favorite is dead. Like, I didn't put uh, the David put dead lines at the bottom with bacon. I didn't put bacon on the bottom of mine. I never heard of that one. That's a new one on me, uh, Mona. I have put bacon in mine. I put bacon grease in mine too sometimes. You never bottom on the bottom of the pan. I cut mine and put back. Yeah, yeah, you can put butter in between it, but it definitely gotta have that. I'm from Katy, Texas. Yeah, I'm from Texas. Yeah, we have rice pudding here. Yeah. Some people, like I say, eat it hot. Uh, but uh, I like mine ice cold, like I say. I might, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and I might wake up at 2 or 30, 3 o'clock in the morning and start watching video on YouTube or whatever and eat rice pudding. It gets no better than that, right? Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I only have, uh, that's the only way I know how to work. I've been working, trained like that from a young age from my mom to culinary school to working in the field business. You have to have a clean working area. If you don't have a clean working area and don't work clean, you don't know what you're doing. You're disorganized. I just cannot stand a cluttered area and I cannot stand a, a dirty area. That's just the way I was raised. My mom taught me that. And I, every chef and supervisor that have worked for growing up throughout the years has been the same way. So that's the way it's instilled in me. And I teach my team that way too. And everybody works with me. Clean as you go. When you finish eating, you uh, have no dishes. Like I said, I do big parties in my house, Super Bowl parties, stuff like that. People come to my house, they see all this food on the table, but they see no dishes and no pots. And they say, how did you do? What did you cook? Who brought this? And I thought, did you just clean as you go. That's the way it is. So maybe people learn from that too as watching me. I never heard of onion bread. Not that don't you Texas. Oh yeah, I know exactly what that is. Oldest town in Texas. Stephen F. Austin University. Yes, uh, uh, who's that, Dr. Robin, the Robin? Yeah, I'm gonna post it, uh, I'm gonna post the videos, uh, not videos, I'm gonna post the recipe, this recipe, I'm gonna leave this live up on Facebook, but I'm gonna move this live over also on YouTube, I'm gonna move it over, and in the description of the video, I'm gonna put the cornbread recipe on there, I just did, and then the rice pudding recipe, I'm gonna post also on there, so, Y'all have both of them on there. So, yeah. So, it'll be easy to do. Y'all can watch the video. I'm going to leave it up, like I say, and y'all can see how I, how I did it, step by step, even with the recipe. That's why I created YouTube last year, because I was posting recipes and, and videos, a bit recipes and pictures, and it's just not the same unless you actually see somebody, uh, Cooking it, it gives you a better idea. Okay, let's see here what we got here. The first piece always the hardest to get out. Of course, y'all know that. Of course, y'all know that already. So I might break the first piece getting it out of here. Let's see something here. That's a bad thing when you're making a uh, cornbread in a skillet. Trying to get it without breaking it. Okay, hold on. I got something for that. I got something for that, y'all. Ah, well, it's too hot right now, anyway. Why it's broken? It's okay. Next piece is going to break on me. Next piece is going to break. I'm 
about to eat that anyway later on with my barbecue. Just so you put some syrup on there. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Hey. That's so hot. Mm. You put that in some buttermilk. Hey. You got something good there, buddy. Mm-hmm. Of course, I like the end. The crunchy end, you no? Know? Oh. Oh, yeah. You can turn it upside down. Yeah, that's true. I like to leave it in the skillet, though. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what kind of syrup I like, Michael. Hold on, just a second. Just a second here. This kind of syrup I like right here. Y'all probably never heard of this. Bear rabbit. You can't get no country than that. Right here, buddy. Bear rabbit, sir. And I like cane syrup, too. Blackburn is okay. Cane syrup is okay. I got this from my one of the. Hey, Robert sent me this. One of the scribes. I think Robert sent me this one. This one, this one good too. I like the sorghum that he sent me. He sent me some of this one too. And I got cane syrup in here too. Y'all sit tight. I got me running to my pantry over here. out of my cane sir but yep you know what they still make Delta Delta's good too I like Delta that's pretty good but these are my go-to this is my go-to sir this is what I'm raised on it was a gold label you can don't make the gold label no more they gonna have the blue label yep Best way to eat this, hold this on the plate, get you some butter and whip that butter up into the syrup on the plate and then hit it easy with a hot biscuit. Hey, that's all, that's all she wrote right there. That's good eating. That's good eating. Oh yeah, Michael, that's it. I just said that. Mm-hmm. Stein syrup is okay. Sting, I've had Stein, Stein syrup too. That's good too. Yep, that's good too. I cannot wait to eat this rice pudding later tonight. I'm looking forward to this. Definitely looking forward to this. I never heard of king syrup. All right, y'all. I'm gonna stay on another like another five minutes. Then I'm gonna go enjoy my uh, dinner here. Like I said, I got some uh, chicken barbecue chicken over there, and I'm gonna make eat me some cornbread with it. And that'd be all she wrote. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for uh, supporting my page, my channel. Oh, yeah, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I about to get a lot of knocks on my door in the morning over bread pudding for my rice pudding. YouTube is old school soul food. <clears throat> Michael, the same same name as this page. It's called old school soul food, Michael. I don't know if you're up following my other social media accounts, 
while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to promote it all here. I'm on YouTube, Old School Soul Food. Facebook, of course, this is Facebook, Old School Soul Food. I'm on Pinterest now. I launched that a few days ago, Old School Soul Food. I got a website, Old School Soul Oh, See, I say all this is like a tongue twister. OldSchoolSoulFood.com. I'm on Instagram, Mr. Old School Soul Food. And uh, uh, did I leave anyone out? Now nah, that's it. I'm on about five or six. Just search Old School Soul Food. that will come up. All of them should come up on the Google. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do a uh, Colin. I'm gonna do a video, short video of uh, when I uh, cut into this bread pudding. I might do it in the morning. Might wake y'all up in the morning. That's probably what I'll do early in the morning. I'm gonna do a. Huh, it might be six, seven o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna eat this for breakfast. Rice pudding for breakfast. <laughs> All right, uh, Michael. Thank you, Jane. Pinterest. Yes, I'm on Pinterest. Cookbook's coming. Watch it. I put a video out today about the cookbook and everything that's going on. Uh, Mont Teresa. Go do a watch that. I explain everything. Marla, I didn't make a cake last night. The reason I did yesterday was 19th of June. I was busy barbecuing and getting some stuff ready because I knew I had to drive to my mom early this morning. I woke up at 5.30 this morning and drove to her. I had to go take the stuff to her. So first time in a long time I didn't do a cake. So I was so busy barbecuing and getting some food ready for her, so I didn't do one last night. Yeah, uh, Sanja, I have a cookbook coming, yes. I don't have it out yet. Uh, yet. Have a good crust with cornbread broken up in it. Oh, yes, Teresa, that's how you eat it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on in the morning. I'm going to come on early in the morning, y'all, for just do a quick video and chat there and do my... <laughs> right, my my uh, rice pudding. Now, I should have a recipe up by then. I'll post the recipe by then in the morning. And the cornbread too, so y'all can uh, know. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna log off now, but like I say, I do see y'all in the morning. I'm gonna do a video for this. And, of course, the cornbread, y'all always see me cut that. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody's support and people watch me weekly and watch all my channels. Uh, Every day, my page get this Facebook page. Give y'all some statistics before I leave. This Facebook page itself, not nothing else on my channel, but this only this Facebook page gets four million hits a week. Four million in one week. People go visit my page periodically in one week. That's 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 astounding to me. That's amazing and astounding. But anyway, old food is that popular. But anyway, y'all. Thanks again for watching my page. Go visit my other social media accounts. YouTube, Insta Instagram, Twitter, now Pinterest, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the morning. And if y'all not, I'll see y'all next video. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Folk Group Day. Don't forget to go buy my t-shirts, buy my brand. Please support me, and I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep putting links periodically. Until then, thanks, y'all. Have a blessed old school soul food night. I love y'all. Bye.